made a little progress on the Ico VTVM, the Model 249. A lot of the paint was missing off of this guy. It looked like it had been sitting in lacquer thinner or something. When I got at the bottom, the paint was just literally coming off and it was wet. The paint was actually liquid. But we sanded it down. We put a little bit of uh, Rust-Oleum Distressed Gray. That's distressed metal paint. That's what I call it. It leaves like a wrinkled finish. It's not perfect, but a heck of a lot better looking than it was. I've got some new feet on order that'll plug into the holes. We'll take care of that in short order. As you can see in the background, the meter movement's out. Uh, we'll put a little bit of wax and polish up the, the bezel on here, but the meter's in pretty good shape. There's some staining evidence of humidity on the meter face, but I'm not going to touch that. I'm likely to do more damage trying to clean it uh, than is on there now, and it's not all that horrible looking. And the meter movement itself is in good shape, or appears to be anyway. <laughs> the chassis is going to take a good cleaning. Whatever took the paint off stained the anodize here and along this edge. I have no idea what they dipped this thing into. At first I thought it was battery damage, but the battery that was in it was bone dry. Although it had leaked at one point in its life, the battery was dry. There was no evidence on the bottom of corrosion. It literally looked like somebody had sat the thing in lacquer thinner overnight. But uh, we'll clean that up. The worst part here is you can see the chassis and uh, the tube sockets of course were inundated you can see there's a lot of damage on the tube sockets we have two new tube sockets we'll install a seven pin and a nine pin the battery holder is in pretty bad shape uh, at least the uh, copper contact on the bottom i'll probably just uh, mount a small single uh, uh, d-cell holder on here one of the plastic ones rather than try to rebuild that this is the bracket that holds the calibration potentiometers. We'll clean that up. We're going to strip the chassis off of here, strip everything off of it, sand it down, and I'm going to try uh, zinc plating the chassis to clean it up. I've seen a couple of people do that on YouTube, and it seems to come out pretty good. So we're going to give that a shot. We're going to strip everything off the front panel, clean everything all up, and the next time you see it, I will hopefully have the chassis zinced. We got lucky. The, um, the switches, the wafer switches, were not touched. They are absolutely clean. The potentiometers weren't touched. They're clean. The transformer, the battery leaked all over the transformer, but the transformer is still working. It appears to be okay. And even if that should fail, that's easily replaced. You take a filament, 6-volt filament transformer, two of them, and put them in series, and you'd have your 6 volts for the filament and 120 volts AC isolated for the, uh, for the power supply section. We'll replace these waxy caps and get everything all back together. Let's see, I've got one, two, three, four, five capacitors there to change. There's an electrolytic down in there actually that one yeah that's the electrolytic for the filter cap so we'll get all this changed up check all the resistors for tolerance if anything's out of tolerance tolerance we will replace it with a new metal film resistor so that's where that stands hopefully when I finish this video we'll have this thing back together okay, next step in the restoration of this uh, Ico VTVM we have the chassis all cleaned up all the uh, Corrosion has been removed and now I could have sandblasted this I could have put it in a tumbler right in the end I just ended up using an orbital sander to bring it down to bare metal and get it good and clean in preparation for hopefully replating it This is the little bracket that holds the potentiometers and as you can see that's all cleaned up and this was the original uh, D cell battery holder and it had an alloy clip over here that would have you know been a spring to hold the battery into the little cup but that part of it was so far gone it uh, couldn't be restored and I don't have the materials to make the correct clip so instead I'm just going to mount this single D cell holder and this should mount up whoops this should mount up right in here and I'll be able to put the 
uh, D-cell for the ohm meter function. Now I've had a block, a two pound block of zinc sitting in the acidic bath here for almost three days and the water's turned a nice charcoal color. So there should be plenty of zinc in the uh, fluid to start the plating process, but I've also purchased some sheets of zinc, uh, pure zinc. These are very thin. I'd like to have found something a little bit thicker, but the first thing I found was these 0.24 millimeter or ten thousandths of an inch thick sheets. This will prove or disprove uh, whether or not this is going to work. I'm assuming that by having uh, my part completely surrounded, I'll get a better transfer of zinc to the object hanging in the middle. I'll be hanging the, uh, the chassis from a wire in the middle of the solution and hopefully I'll get a uniform plating all the way around. That's my theory at least. Plus I'm able to bring the fluid level up to just below where these tie wires are and hopefully not get any contamination or minimize my contamination from the uh, lead or uh, whatever is used to plate these uh, bus wires and I did solder directly to the zinc and I have to say the zinc alloy the solderability is phenomenal uh, solder took to that stuff incredibly quickly but we're gonna try to keep the little dot of solder, the little dot of solder that's right here as much out of the uh, solution as possible it may get wet but it's gonna be minimized so hopefully by connecting one lead here and hanging this from a piece of wire in the center, I'll get a uniform plating process. So we'll see what that looks like uh, when the video advances just a little bit. And I should have centered that frame a little bit better. I'm kind of excited about trying this. So we're going to set this up and see what okay, kind of plating. we've begun the rebuild of the Ico chassis. The plating, I think, came out looking fantastic. This almost looks like a new unit now. We sprayed a little paint on the power transformer. Some of it's flaking off, but that's okay. It doesn't show the rust and the crap that was on it anymore. Our new tube sockets are in. I put some new wires on the transformer. This was done with four 15-minute cycles in the bath for the plating in between each cycle. I polished the surface with 4 lot steel wool. Now a lot of people I hear using Scotch-Brite. Scotch-Brite in my opinion is far too abrasive. It's going to leave scratches on the surface and probably take some of the plating off in the process. 4 rot steel wool is designed for polishing and if you don't believe that take something like this aluminum pie tin here and Try scotch bright on one end and 4 rot steel wool on the other and you'll quickly see that the 4 rot steel wool is much better uh, surface finish. The downside to the 4 rot steel wool is you do not, and let me repeat this, you do not want to use the 4 rot steel wool anywhere near your workbench. It will leave hundreds of thousands of tiny little shards of nearly invisible uh, stainless steel whiskers are stainless steel steel wool whiskers and they will get into meter movements speakers stick to anything magnetic they make a mess I did the steel wooling in the sink and you know washing the unit as I steel wooled it and the surface finish as you can see came out just beautiful you have to uh, do it in steps. If you try to do it all in one shot, the item comes out of the bath somewhat gray and grainy and uh, doesn't look very nice. But if you do it in small steps, 15 minutes in the bath, steel wool, wool it a little bit, put it back in the, in the uh, plating solution, and after four go-arounds, we have a nice uniform uh, layer of zinc on the chassis and it looks great. We've begun the rewiring process. The sharp idle notice we're down here in the main lab and not up at the 10 buck test bench. I have all of my hardware down here, all of my capacitors, all of my metal film resistors, yada yada yada. Everything I need to put this thing back together including new terminal strips and hardware nuts and bolts washers are down here and I got tired of running up and down to the lab upstairs and the lab down here. I was beginning the process of carrying everything upstairs and I said this is nonsense 
So we're going to do the restoration. The rest of the restoration work will be right here on the uh, the normal lab bench. So we'll move on. We'll do some more assembly and pick up from there. And as a quick aside, here is the chassis before taking it apart and replating. And you can see it's quite a mess in these uh, in this piece of video. You can see where the battery damage has removed the original plating and corroded or rusted the steel uh, underneath. And again, here's the unit after coming out of plating, after being cleaned up. And this is going to make a much more reliable, nice little unit. This is the mess that was in there. All of these resistors will be, you know, changed out for new metal film units. Of course, the tube sockets are corroded beyond redemption. And again, fortunately, the switches were fine. We'll check all the resistors on here, replace the waxy paper caps, and put that back together. And we should have our meter up and going. Okay, coming down to the finishing line with our Ico Model 249 VTVM. We buffed up the face of the meter, the bezel on the meter, we buffed up the knobs, put everything back together, cleaned up as best we could where the anodizing had been damaged on the front panel. If I went any deeper I would have taken the silk screening off. This could be re-anodized. Anodizing is actually a pretty simple process but then you'd have to re-silk screen it and I don't have the facilities to do that. So it'll have to stand as it is and here's the back of it. We left most of the switching switch wiring intact. We did find one little crack in one of the wafer switches. We epoxied a, a crutch over the top of that to hold it together. It should be fine. And uh, here's the inside of the chassis now. New capacitors. All new resistors on the chassis proper. All of the resistors on the switches were checked and were well within tolerance. Uh, the resistors that were here on the main chassis, of course, had been steeped in battery acid, battery leakage. So we just replaced everything, the terminal strips, everything that was there is new with the exception of the pots. The tube sockets are new. And uh, the chassis looks great. Now, as an A-B comparison, again, here's what it used to look like. And you can see there's an awful lot of corrosion all the way around on this. When I flip it up and turn it over, you can see it's pretty nasty. However, now that we're back and done here, we have our new battery holder in. Let's see if we can get this to pivot around and go the other way so we can get a peek at the top of the chassis. These little vices are handy. Uh, I can't quite get the angle I want here. But I think you can see the top of the chassis is nice and clean. Everything's in A1 condition now. The transformer, I've kind of got my fingers crossed on because the transformer was soaked in acid as well. However, it does work. All the appropriate voltages are there. Whether or not the insulation will stand the test of time remains to be seen. However, I did find a transformer online that's ever so slightly bigger. It's about three-eighths of an inch wider. It would still fit in here, and it has the appropriate voltages. So worst case, I'll replace the transformer. Oh, uh, there was one other thing I wanted to say. Oh, we've added up here I don't know if it's visible we've added a fuse just in case the transformer decides to give us trouble the original circuit did not have a fuse I put a terminal strip down here with a couple of extra terminals on it so we could add the line fuse because originally the line cord went directly to the switch and then back to the power transformer so we added a fuse just in case this transformer decides to get cranky. We'll slip it back in its case, do a quick alignment with it, and this project will be finished. Alrighty, and here we have our freshly restored Ico 249 VTVM. Not a museum restoration to be sure, but certainly worthy of sitting on the bench now we wouldn't want a museum restoration because this is going to be this is not going to be a shelf queen it's going to be used and uh you know moved around handled whoops almost knocked the camera over 
And we certainly don't want to uh, invest weeks worth of time putting a perfect showroom finish on this only to have it banging around on the bench. We just want it presentable. I am still waiting on the proper feet to come in. I have them on order that will plug into the holes and uh, be the proper rubber feet. We still need to restore the ground cable. I have to order some more meter lead. I'm out of uh, black meter lead. I'm going to order a roll of red, roll of black, and probably pick up some spools of hookup wire as well. We're running short on uh, 24 gauge hookup wire. We had to use something a little bit heavier in here. At any rate, how does it work? Okay, well, we'll take some quick checks here now. My trusty old triplet we know is accurate. You've seen many videos where I've proved that. So let's run this up to half a volt. And that's 0.5 volts. We're on the 1.5 scale, half a volt on the money. Let's go up to a volt. And there we have one volt, one volt. And all the way up here, 1.5 volts, 1.5 volts. So let's go up to the 5 volt range. 1.5 volts on the money. We'll drop this up one scale. And we'll run this up. Let's see, we're on the 10 volt scale, so that should be just about 2 volts. And we're pretty much on two volts let's run it right on up to we're on the five volt scale here so we'll go up to five volts right on five volts close enough 15 volts we're still on the 10 volt scale in the other meter so we'll run that up to 10 volts and 9.8 close enough these meters, it all depends on the, uh, how accurate the resistors are. They're all 1% resistors, and we're within 1% there. So you can only expect so much out of these old meters. 50 volt scale, 50 volt scale. Let's run this up 25 volts and see what we've got. At 20.9, uh, 24.9 rather, close enough. Let's see, 50 volt scale, yep. Actually, no, that's better. That's uh, 24.5, 7.4 points, probably some parallax here in the camera. But uh, good enough, and we'll run it right up to 50 volts and see what we've got. And we're right on 50 volts there. And I call that 49 volts. So close enough. Close enough for the age of the meter. It'll work just fine. So now we have another addition. Something that will show up well in the videos. We can clearly see that scale. That'll make a nice video meter. Okay, that wraps this one up. And uh, next thing we have to do is move on to... Uh, let me pause just a second here. Okay, this will be the next project. And this will go, uh, when we start working on our kit, it'll be much easier to read this scale in the video than it is to read most of the other signal generators I have of this vintage. I picked this up. This is not your standard ICO coloration. I don't know if this is newer or older. I'm not sure uh, whether the blue was later or whether the anodized panel was later. I don't know don't know enough about this gear. I do know that this came in two different versions. You can get it with the anodized panel or this painted one. I picked this one up because the front panel is virtually perfect. There's not a mark on it. Now, this bezel, the chipping paint, is a well-known issue with these. Not a big deal. We'll sand it down, prime it, and paint it. Uh, we'll have to do some refinishing of the box, refinishing of the handle. I'll probably just paint these silver by hand. I'm not going to try to remove those rivets. This is not a museum restoration. This is going to be on the bench. The cord's in decent shape. The unit has all of its original screws, which leads me to believe it's probably fine. I'll recap it, do a quick calibration on it. Uh, we'll disassemble this and repaint it. That'll be done. Anyway, don't want to make this video run on, but that's our next project. Till next time, see ya.